Okay, so most people, if you, if you ask this general knowledge, that uh, nerve impulse is some kind of electrical activity. So how is a nerve, um, how do they send messages? It's not an electric current, but it is a form of the change in electrical activity, which we are going to discuss. And uh, this, we're going to talk about the action potential. Um, so here um, we have got a, a nerve cell. That's the cell body. And this is the axon. And that's the end of the nerve. And we said, yes, nerve impulses travel down the axon. And it's a it's electrical, there's a wave of electrical activity. We've got to talk about what exactly that wave of activity is. Okay, now it's all to do with the ions, the balance of the ions of potassium, K plus, positive ions, and sodium ions. All right, now every cell, I'll draw a cell here, um, has uh, a membrane protein called the sodium potassium. Uh, ATPase. And this is constantly working. So, and what it's doing is for every one molecule of ATP, it pumps out three sodium ions. This is against the concentration gradient, so we need ATP. And at the same time, it pumps in two potassium ions. Okay, and that's working fairly continuously. The, the cell membrane, generally speaking, is impermeable. It's impermeable to sodium ions all the time, and it's slightly permeable. It's got some channel for potassium ions. We'll talk about them in a minute. So you, you establish a, um, a, a concentration gradient and also an electrical gradient. We'll see. So what we're going to end up is this is the inside of the neuron or any cell. But we're talking about nerve cells. This is the axon. Um, you're going to end up with a high concentration of potassium inside and a low concentration of potassium outside and a the other way around with sodium. You're going to end up with high sodium and low inside. So the sodium, of course, is going to want to move into the cell, but it can't because this is impermeable and the potassium is going to want to move out. Now, there's an imbalance here. Because you pump three sodiums out for every two potassiums, that means you end up with more positive on the outside here is going to be more positive and it's going to be more negative on the inside and that means you set up a potential difference of voltage and the the size of that potential the rest the normal resting cell or a nerve cell included is about minus 70 millivolts okay so you've got a voltage there just like if you have a 1.5 volt battery that's going to make negative electrons move around from the negative end to the positive end so this is like this is a, a voltage and this means that uh, even though you've got low potassium concentration outside uh, and high inside it's actually going to come the potassium do to some extent want to come inside the cell even though it's against the concentration gradient because it's in the direction of the electrical gradient. It's moving towards the negative end. Uh, and that's why it's okay to have a few, there'll be a few little potassium channels, yeah, open in this membrane. Um, and the potassium kind of reach an equilibrium. Yeah, you get some coming back out down the concentration gradient, but you get some coming back in due to the electrical gradient. Whereas the sodiums, they are, they can't move. Under normal conditions, the sodiums cannot move. Right, now let's see what happens when uh, a nerve impulse all this 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 voltage is going to change when a nerve impulse passes down the cell and what happens is you for a very brief period of time 70 millivolts it will become it will go up to about plus 55 millivolts so become positive on the outside before returning back to that and this change in membrane potential okay is what this electrical activity is. You get this, so this switching from minus 70 up to plus 55, and that passes in a wave uh, down the axon, and that's what the nerve impulse is. So now we've got to talk about how that wave actually happens, okay? So if you look here, what I've got here is, um, well, we, just, we won't worry about the, the graph on the left for a minute, but we're going to talk about these sodium channels inside the membrane there are some sodium channels and you can see 
that they can exist in three different states. They can be closed, no sodium ions can pass. It can be open, the sodium ions will move down the concentration gradient. Or this third state, which is inactive. Not quite the same as being closed, but no sodium ions can pass. Right, now these sodium channels are called voltage gated. That means it's switched on from being closed to open by changes in voltage. Okay, and uh, the way it does that is the protein has got a lot of um, negatively charged residues in it, and uh, they all they will change the pos this, this, the position of them is going to change if the voltage changes. All right. Okay, but anyway, don't worry about that. Let's talk. Let's see what happens here in this graph. Okay, so this at the period here, this is um, so let's call it naught here. So I've used one, two, three, four, five up there. This is naught. This is when the cell's resting. Uh, and we can see we've got a voltage of minus 17 millivolts. Now, saying if the cell, the nerve cell is stimulated by saying if it's um, uh, connected to a touch receptor, you touch something, okay, and so some sodium ions will flow into the cell. They'll open so, and the so the sodium ions will come in a little bit stimulated. But nothing will really happen if it's only a few sodium ions. It will just restore that back. The sodium potassium pump will pump those sodium ions and go back to normal. However, if I'm going to draw a dotted line here, if that gets above about 55 millivolts, and this is called the threshold value, if it's if it's above that, so if enough sodium ions to get come in to get above that 55 millivolts point there, what that does is it switches minus 55 there. Sorry. It switches the voltage gated channel to being open. And what will that do? Well, so that's what the voltage gated channel is now open. We have high sodium on the outside and low sodium on the inside. So the concentration gradient is going to make the sodium come in. Not also is the concentration gradient, but it's the voltage because that's minus 70 millivolts. The sodium is positively charged. So there's the electrical thing and the concentration gradient you're going to get a big influence, influx of sodium ions, which is, of course, going to make this less negative. So this is going to shoot up here, okay, and it goes up right. And it's a positive feedback. The more positive you're getting in, the more these sodium voltage-gated channels will open. However, when it gets to position 2 here, what happens when it gets to about plus 40, the, these channels then close. And they don't just go to the close, they go to the inactive, which is different. Okay, but it means they can't let any more sodiums in. Um, now, what makes, but that doesn't really, well, it explains why the voltage is not going up anymore, but it doesn't explain why it goes down. It does go down. The reason why it goes down, because at point three here, what is happening is we also have some potassium voltage gated channels. And they're called slow. They're slow to respond. So they, they like the sodiums. They will open as the as the um, the voltage becomes less negative and more positive. They'll open, but they're slower to open. They're, they're a few milliseconds behind the sodium channels. So here, number three, the K plus channels open. And what will happen then is the so the potassium ions well they're actually going to um they're going to flood out because there's a concentration gradient so that means you're going to get loads of positive ions flowing out which is going to cause going to make this voltage more negative anyway the potassium channels continue to be open and the potassium floods out of the cell and it makes the voltage actually drop below the 70 millivolts mark. Uh, and I've drawn here for uh, this bit where it dips below four and five. So I'm going to draw it because it's getting a bit busy there. We're going to have a look down below what happens at four and five. Okay, now this, okay, at four and five, this is called hyperpolarization.
So hyperpolarization is means that the voltage is below, it's lower than minus 70 millivolts. It's lower than the actual resting potential. And this is pretty important because this is called, four and five is also called the, the refractory period. And during this period, you can't get another action potential. So you can't get another one of these uh, spikes occurring. Well, the reason for that is, well, at position four, you can't get an action potential because the sodium channels are in the inactive the, the in, in the inactive form so that means even which is different to just being closed when they're closed if when they're closed uh, here when the voltage goes up they will open when they're inactive it doesn't matter what the voltage is they will just stay closed the whole time and they stay the, the sodium channels have will stay closed for a certain amount of time and then they'll start to they'll start to open up again and that's when we get to this um this, this second period five but this this period four this is called the absolute refractive period and during that period because they're closed it doesn't matter what you do the sodium ions cannot move out of the cell uh, into the cell sorry and so you cannot get another action potential now in number five the sodium channels are now open again they're back to normal And it's called sometimes called the relative refractory period. Okay, and the reason why it's called that is um, so relative refractory. It's not impossible to have a nerve input to have an action potential, but it's difficult to have a difficult because you're not starting off here. You're not starting off from minus seventy millivolts. You must start off from minus eighty or ninety or whatever. And don't forget, in order for an action potential to occur, you've got to get up to that minus 55, uh, the threshold value. So you're going to have to uh, let enough sodium ions in, not just to go from normally, you have to go from there up to there, from minus 70 to 55. You have to go from a lower value right up to there, which, of course, is harder to do. You need more sodium ions to enter the cell. So that, that, so that is it's not impossible but it's difficult for an action potential there. Now, the, it's really important that you have this refractory period because, uh, let's draw the axon again. Well, what normally happens is, of course, if you get depolarization there, so this goes to uh, plus 55 millivolts, that's going to open all the sodium channels, so it's going to make this bit depolarized as well isn't it that's going to become depolarized and then that's going to become depolarized and then that bit and so the nerve impulse will pass down the cell now if you didn't have a refractory period what it would do is it would also cause depolarization of that bit of the membrane and that means you'd get a nerve impulse going backwards as well nerve impulses can only travel in one direction that's really important the way the whole nervous system works so this refractory period is pretty important for um allowing only one way transport of the nerve impulse. So that is the nature of the wave of electrical activity which passes down the, the nerve cell. And it's really key oh yeah, is the, AT, the sodium potassium ATPAs, which is maintaining that, that membrane uh, potential. And if we get at this point here, what's returning the, the membrane potential to normal that will be the activity of this enzyme, which is pumping the ions and the where they should go. And generally speaking, you're probably aware that the you know the brain uses an awful lot of of uh, energy. Um, one of the reasons why is this continual activity. The sodium potassium ATPase is needed uh, to have all the nerve cells ready to carry um, messages. <laughs>